Hello, and welcome to the third episode of The History of Astronomy by Stello. I'm your instructor, Drone Vival. Last time, we discussed the ancient Egyptians with their monumental structures, advanced timekeeping systems, and unique view of the cosmos. Today, we'll be looking at a civilization across the world whose peoples, thriving around the fertile Yellow River Valley, gave rise to technical and cultural advancements unparalleled among their neighbors. We speak, of course, of the ancient Chinese. Today, we'll take a look into their astronomical records, star charts, inventions, and cosmology. China, the Middle Kingdom, the Central Beauty. It is a land of many names. Indeed, for much of its history, China was a haven of civilization in the midst of harsh terrain and nomadic raiders. Nestled within the banks of the Yellow and Yangtze rivers, the first organized Chinese settlements found themselves surrounded by plentiful, fertile land. To the north lay unforgivable cold, and to the south, impassable jungles. To the west, mountains taller than any in the whole world and a desert vast in magnitude. Truly, it's not surprising that the ancient Chinese believed that they inhabited the center of the world, the center of civilization. Cultivating important staples such as rice early in their history, the Chinese people flourished around their two rivers, growing into an incredibly wealthy and populous country early on. The first dynasty, the Shang, is known to have arisen around the 12th century BC, providing a semblance of unity and balance for the Chinese people. However, China has never been a civilization of perfect harmony. Indeed, it was united for much of its history, yet interdynastic periods were bleak, violent, and laden with conflict amongst warlords seeking to fill the power gap. However, when the dust settled, China was consistently one of the richest political entities in the world, making huge strides in metallurgy, engineering, and the sciences. In the field of astronomy, the Chinese excelled. The concept of the 28 mansions is an example of an early development in their understanding of the stars. A part of a complex system of Chinese constellations, the 28 mansions was essentially a categorization of groups of stars based on the movement of the moon and the corresponding longitudes through which it passed. It considered the ecliptic plane as four quarters bound into one, each figure headed by a mythical creature, the black tortoise in the north, the azure dragon in the east, the white tiger in the west, and the vermilion bird in the south. Each region had an equal amount of these mansions, represented by a single determinative star. Though the Chinese language has remained remarkably consistent for most of its history, the system of mansions is incredibly old. A lacquered box found in a tomb dating to the 5th century BC contained a diagram of the 28 mansions, a sign the system was certainly older, and indeed, older than the Qin dynasty, the first to fully unify China. As thus, the meanings of each mansion, consisting of only a single Chinese word, have been largely lost to time, though it can be deduced that they held great significance to the Chinese people and their culture. Besides cataloging constellations, the Chinese were the first to create star catalogues and maps. This effort was pioneered primarily by two notable astronomers of the Zhou dynasty, Xi Shen and Gan De, who wrote the Star Manual of Masters Gan and Xi. Though the text has been lost to time, it is referenced and acknowledged in later works, such as the Treatise on Astrology in the Kaiwan Rain, which accredits the naming of more than 800 stars to Xi and Gan. It is also said that they were able to pinpoint the locations of 121 of these with remarkable accuracy in the sky. A later work by Zhang Heng, a Han Dynasty astronomer and inventor, hugely expanded on past knowledge, cataloging two and a half thousand stars and more than a hundred constellations. Besides this, the Chinese were meticulous in record-keeping, especially when it came to celestial phenomena. A constant record of eclipses and unusual activities, such as supernovae and shooting stars, were kept. Regarding the eclipses, their prediction was an entirely separate discipline for the Chinese. Indeed, the very first Chinese astronomers were tasked with predicting lunar and solar eclipses, among other things, which were seen to be bad omens. Later in Chinese history, mathematical and scientific advances enabled astronomers to more accurately predict upcoming eclipses. Xi Shen, as mentioned prior, was a pioneer in this field. He kept careful records of solar and lunar eclipses, eventually writing an elaborate treatise outlining a method to predict the upcoming occurrence of eclipses based on certain factors. 
Zhang Heng, also mentioned prior, further Chen's works, clarifying differences between solar and lunar eclipses, and proposing sound scientific reason for them. He correctly stated that lunar eclipses are caused by the obstruction of the Earth, whereas solar eclipses are caused by the passing of the moon across the sun's path. Further observations of the moon led Shen Kuo, an 11th century astronomer, to the realization that the moon was round. He used a sphere covered in a white powder with a light upon it to prove this, replicating the phases of the moon successfully. He also proved that obliquity in the moon's path is what prevents eclipses from occurring every time the moon passes by the sun, stating that an absence in such obliquity and proper alignment would cause for the moon to actually block the light of the sun. Though the Chinese were exceedingly skilled in astronomical observation and postulation, their system of calendars was also highly advanced. Until the Zhou Dynasty, when the traditional Chinese lunisolar calendar was first invented, the solar calendar was the primary method of timekeeping in the Chinese society. They had many forms, but two were most common, the Five Elements calendar and the Four Quarters calendar. Five is considered to be an auspicious number, and as such, the Five Elements calendar divided a 365-day year into five periods of 73 days, each having a defining element day, and then two months of three 12-day weeks each. The elements of these periods, in order, were wood, then fire, earth, metal, and finally water. The Five Elements Calendar's counterpart, the Four Quarters Calendar, had ten-day weeks, with months containing three such weeks, and a year having twelve such months, plus an additional month intercalated as required to keep the calendar accurate. The day naming system used for this type of calendar was quite similar to the modern system used to name months and days. The twelve earthly branches designated the twelve months, with the ten heavenly stems stemming off the branches and designating the ten days of the week. Later on, the Chinese switched to a lunisolar calendar, which was more accurate than the previous solar calendar. Its first iteration, in the Zhou Dynasty, designated the beginning of the new year as the day of the winter solstice new moon, with each month after that beginning with the next new moon. This resulted in a twelve-month-long year, with the thirteenth month as an intercalary month, added to the end of the year as required for proper alignment. The year did not always begin with the new moon of the winter solstice, it regularly changed. In the Qin Dynasty, for example, it was decreed that the year would begin with the tenth month of the year, and end with the ninth, analogous to a modern calendar beginning with October and ending with September. Later, in the Han Dynasty, Emperor Wu issued reforms that redefined the length of the year and the lunar month to great precision. The year was redefined as 365 plus 385 over 1539 days, only a minute off from the modern measure, and the month was redefined as 29 plus 43 over 81 days. A leap month would occur every three years, so as to realign the calendar. This new calendar, called the Taichu, or Great Beginning Calendar, was further divided into 12 pairs of solar terms, each of which indicated a climactic shift in the region. Indeed, this calendar was incredibly accurate for the time, and is still in use for certain cultural and religious activities in China and neighboring countries in East Asia. The Chinese also had numerous technical advancements and made several notable instruments to assist in astronomical observations. Chiefly presiding over these was the armillary sphere, a model of the Earth with various cosmic axes around it which was used for calendrical and general computations. Shi Shen and Gan De, who you may recall were responsible for the first star charts, are believed to have used a single ring armillary device, one which would have allowed them to measure the declination and right ascension of celestial objects, crucial coordinate-like measures in pinpointing the exact three-dimensional locations of such stars. Later, in the Han period, the technology of the armillary sphere was further advanced. Horizon and meridian lines were added to the mechanism by Zhang Heng, who also later created the first water-powered armillary sphere that would accurately represent the co-motion of all of these factors. Indeed, this innovation was among his finest, a true testament to the Chinese technological expertise. The Chinese cosmological system was quite unique, with complexities that cannot be covered in this span of time. However, they revolved around a few key factors. Among these was the concept of the five stars, Venus, the metal star, Jupiter, the wood star, Mercury, the water star, Mars, the fire star, 
and Saturn, the Earth star. These were collectively thought of as celestial companions, if you will, that accompanied the sun and moon through their heavenly journeys. As for the Earth itself, it was initially thought of as a square plane over which lay a hemispherical expanse, the heavens. China itself was in the center of the Earth, hearkening back to the name Middle Kingdom, while surrounding kingdoms, decreasing in stability with distance from the center, lay in all directions and mountains fell the corners. The Chinese also devised a cosmic chart, which was very much reminiscent of orbital maps from the solar system with nine layers. It indicated the rotational period and path of major proximate planets, stars, and constellations. The first layer housed the moon, the fourth the sun, and the ninth emptiness. The 28 mansions were also correlated with the celestial model and occupied the second to last ring, a symbol of their great distance from the earth. Later Taoist influences brought the concept of yin and yang, dark and light, and applied this to the cosmos as a whole. It argued that duality existed in all things and that the balance between such states was a part of the natural order of the cosmos. In China, astrology and astronomy were closely linked, with most studies into them being sponsored by the state or by wealthy lords and nobles of the bureaucratic framework. Formally being rather informally held ideas, the concepts of astrology and astronomy were finally formalized during the Han Dynasty, when the theory of five elements, heaven and earth model, and the concept of duality were brought together into one. As for Chinese astrology, it was held that one's destiny could be entirely determined by the celestial alignment at their time of birth. This included the positions of the five stars, the presence of comets, the time of birth, and the zodiac sign of birth. A subset of this philosophy, Zi Ve Do Shu, systemized these computations, requiring only a few temporal inputs. This system is common in China to this day. And lastly, we reach the cycle of animal signs, which is rather well known in the West. The system was devised from observations of Jupiter and its orbital period, roughly 12 years. This cycle was partitioned into periods of one year, with each being given specific animal signs and corresponding religious and cultural value. Indeed, the ancient Chinese understanding of the world, and the implications of said understanding on their society, is exceedingly interesting. From complex mechanical structures, to detailed astronomical records and charts, to the remarkable Taichu calendar and cosmological model of the Chinese, astronomy and astrology were a vital part of their civilization and culture. China, the Middle Kingdom, land of prosperity unrivaled for millennia, pushed the field of astronomy forward and shaped our understanding of the world as we know it. Thanks for watching this episode of the History of Astronomy. I've been your instructor, Drew Baval.